looking at us. So what? Well, I don't like it. Let's go. We're entitled to sit here if we want. Seats are free, aren't they? Yeah, I know. We've been sitting here for the last three hours. They can't move us on in a minute. Let them. I don't want any trouble. Come on. Oh, all right. Coppers in skirts. Pity they haven't got something better to do. Come along to the hospital too. What for? Well, it's quite a shock to the system, you know, jumping into the river. You ought to let the doctor take a look at you. Don't you bother about me. I'll be all right. But you can't go home like that. Why not? Look, Edna. Much better to tell him. We ain't got no home to go to. We was turned out tonight. You come along with me. We'll see what we can do for you. You know, Lucy has all the fun. Nothing exciting ever happens when I'm on duty. Can't you imagine how his mother is feeling this morning? Oh, I've no patience with these mothers. They should look after their children properly. But it doesn't always work out that way. It didn't with me. What do you mean, you? My little girl would have been about that age by now. Yours? She was killed in a car crash when she was three. I didn't even know you were married. Well, not anymore. He was killed, too. Oh, so I am sorry. I should have kept my big mouth shut. That's all right. I don't think about it much anymore. Do I see some other mother going through what I did? Good morning. Good morning, Sergeant. Good morning, Sergeant. I've got something for you here. A report of alleged cruelty to a child at 51 Harold Street. Name of Dawson. Child's a girl aged about two and a half. Here, you better have the letter. Anonymous, of course. They always are. For you, Sergeant. Hello? Oh, yes, that's right. I'll be down in a minute. Better look into that first thing. I want you to do a school at 12. Right, Sergeant. Oh, Harrington, have you done your expenses? No, not yet, Sergeant. I'll do them right away. If you'll just go in there, Sergeant Ramsey will be down in a minute. What do you suppose they want to see you for, Edna? They give me five quid out of the poor box, I expect. Oh, no. They want to send me back to hospital, that's what it is. Well, I won't go, see? Oh, now, don't worry. I know how to handle coppers. Good morning. How are you feeling today? I'm all right. Good. Won't you sit down? 
I asked you to come round because we're grateful for what you did last night and we want to help you if we can. Perhaps we can find Mr. Evans a job. He's not well enough to work. He's ill. You can see that. Then shouldn't he be in hospital? You see, Edna, I told you, you shouldn't... Look, be... he hates hospital. He won't go back, so it's no use your trying to make him. He doesn't own it, there, miss. Me and Edna, well, we just don't want to be separated, see? I'll be okay again in, in a week or two, and then I'll be able to find work. But who's going to keep things going meanwhile? I will. Are you in work now? No. How long have you been out? Five weeks. Are you drawing unemployment pay? No. How's that? I don't believe in it. But that's nonsense. You pay in for it and you're entitled to it. You'd better give me your cards and I'll have a word with the supervisor at the exchange. Haven't you got them with you? I lost them. When? Three weeks ago. Did you report their loss? No. You should have done. Never mind, your ration book will do. You haven't lost that too, have you? Hadn't you better tell me about it, Mrs. Evans? There's nothing to tell. I'm only trying to help. You can't go on like this, can you? Come on, Edna, let's go. It's no good, Dave. They're bound to find out sooner or later. I did a float from the army. I see. How long have you been over the side? Four months. What made you do it? I met Dave and we wanted to get married. He needs me more than the army does. That's true enough. I'll have to report this, I'm afraid. In view of what happened last night, I'll have a word with your CO and ask her to let you down as lightly as she can. Thanks, miss. That's not a good, that'll do. We can but try. Doesn't Mrs. Dawson live here? Top floor! Hey, Mum! The cops are here! Where? They've gone up to Mrs. Dawson's. But he isn't there. Why don't you tell them? Jan! Lenfond's here! Let's go and see what we can find out. Um, do you live here? Yes, so do I. I suppose you've come about the Dawson's baby. Yes, what do you know about her? I know she's left alone up there all day for the night. I off to have her myself for five bob a week, but that didn't suit them all, no. So there she sits, poor bastard. Do you often hear her cry? Cry? Never heard a baby cry like it. Breaks your heart to listen to her. Breaks mine. I got the flat underneath. Are the parents out all day? Yes. Both of them? Yes. Do you know where the mother works? Down at Arrington's, I think. No, isn't that Mrs. Hawkins? What time do they usually get home? Oh, can't say, really. Sometimes it's six o'clock, sometimes seven. Has anyone in the house got a key of their door? No. Their new locks put in. Oh, yeah. First thing when they come here. Hey, Mum! She's got out the window! <laughs> Call the fire brigade, quickly! Give me something to smash the door down with. A hammer, an axe, anything.
Double one one three, Chelsea Police. I'll put you through to the CID. Funny. Sergeant Lee says he found them under your bed. So what? Does that say I put them there? CID? Yes. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Harmsworth. Yes. Not another. Oh, this must be your busy season. All right, I come round. What? How old is a child? All right, goodbye. I was in the baby linen when this lady came in with her child. She looked at several sets of coats and leggings and then put one set into her shopping basket. It's a lie. Now, just a moment. You'll be able to tell me your story in a minute. You mean I've got to sit here and let her tell lies about me? No, it doesn't help to talk like that, you know. Go on, Miss Havisham. She then went over to a display of baby's rompers and put one of those in her bag, too. Oh, glory be! She didn't pay for any of these articles, so as she was leaving the store, I stopped her and brought her up here. And what have you got to say about all this? It's all a pack of lies. You can look if you like. I've got nothing to be ashamed of. Did you buy these things? Yes. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Then why aren't they wrapped? They were in one of the paper bags, but I took them out to have a look at them. Did you get a receipt? Yes. Uh, just a minute. Oh. I must have lost it. All right. I'm going to take you to Chelsea Police Station. I must tell you that you're not obliged to say anything, but anything you say may be given in evidence. Now, I'd like your name and address, please. I told you, that's my business. You're just being silly, you know. I've got to have it sooner or later. Well, you won't get it. Very well. We'll talk about that later on. Come along. And you can take your hands off me. I'll come and see you later. Now, Mrs. Foster, would you give the baby to Miss Barton a moment, please? I want to ask you some questions. Who told you I was Mrs. Foster? Well, we have our ways of finding out these things. Are you still at Slagburn Street? Yes. You won't tell me husband, will you? Well, you'll have to know eventually. Oh, you won't have to go mad. When were you born? April the 23rd, 1935. 
But that means you're only just 18. So what? How long have you been married? 15 months. Mm -hmm. And how old is the baby? 15 months. You don't think I'd have married him otherwise, do you? Well, that's your affair. I only wanted to make sure I'd got it right. Now, come along. Where, where are we going? Into my office. But, but what about my baby? Well, bring him along. We'll find someone to look after him. <laughs> Bridget Foster, you're charged with stealing on October the 27th from... Can't we keep that child quiet? Well, they're doing their best, sir. Bridget Foster, you're charged with stealing on October the 27th from a shop at Sloan Square. One baby... One baby's rumpus suit, one coat, one pair of leggings. Valued together at seven pounds, 18 shillings and ninepence. The property of Mrs. Robinson and Representative Charging. Contrary to Section 2 of the Lastly Act of 1916. Do you wish to say anything in answer to the charge? You're not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so. But whatever you say will be taken down in writing and may be given in evidence. I didn't take the stuff. Somebody must have put it in my bag when I wasn't looking. You'd better read these. Have a search, will you? This way, Mrs. Foster. Inspector Gray says, can you not keep that kid quiet? He can't hear himself speak. You tell Inspector Gray to come and have a try himself. All right, give him back to his mother. It'll be a pleasure. Sign here. Can she go now? Yes. What do you want to go and do a thing like that for? I don't know. You must have had some reason. I'll give you all I can for the housekeeping. I can't manage any more. It wasn't that. Well, what was it then? Oh, if you must know, it was your mother. How could it be? She wasn't even with you. Oh, she kept on nag, nag, nag about the baby not being properly dressed. Stanley never looked like that when he was a baby. He was always the best dressed child in the street. Just means she used to knit me things. Well, I can't knit, see? Well, no one's asking you to, are they? The kid looks all right. Oh, I'd be all right. Really, I would if we could go and find somewhere else to live. Well, where else can we go? You know it takes years to find a place. Look, you'll have to go home on your own. I'm due back at the garage. Oh, Stan, why? Well, they want me to take a load to Manchester tonight. But you said you'd mind the kid while I went out with Ruby. I know I did, but I can't. Oh, Stan, I haven't been out for weeks. Never mind. The overtime will come in useful now. So long. Here, when will you be back? Friday afternoon, I expect. But what about the court tomorrow? How am I going to pay the fine? Well, you have to ask them for time to pay. Suppose they won't give it me. They will. Oh, I, I couldn't bear it if they sent me to prison. They won't. Not the first time. Now, look, you tell them you'll pay as soon as your husband gets back on Friday. All right? I've got to go now. So long. Hello, young man. Come to give yourself up. What's the matter, lost? Yes, lost his tongue, too. Perhaps you can help him find it. Well, we'll try. What's your name, eh? Don't you know your name? What does your mummy call you? I can make a suggestion. I don't doubt it. You better come along with me and we'll see what we can find for you, eh? Come on. Ask him if he'd like to join the force. We could do with some young blood. Hello. Who's all this in aid of? Well, I'm going dancing. I thought you were supposed to be on plain clothes duty. So I am. It's a nightclub observation job. Evening dress essential. Some people have all the luck. Oh, well, you wouldn't think so if you knew who I was going with. Not that handsome Sergeant Barnes. <laughs> no worse luck. Angus Ross. Oh, well, that's different. Now I shan't feel so bad when I'm out plodding the beat. Just off, Sergeant. You might get me some tea from the canteen first. 
We've got a new recruit. Oh, no, not another one. This one's not quite so vocal, are you? Oh, thank goodness for small nurses. Do you think one of these might help? I shouldn't be surprised. Can you remember your name yet? Do you want a chocolate? Did you know you went out and left the window open? I always leave it a bit open. The gas leaks and I wanted to be sure she'd get some air. She got some air, all right. Do you leave her often? Any Monday to Friday, I have to go out to work. Well, can't you arrange for one of the neighbours to look after her? And have her poking into my things? No, thank you. Mrs. Dawson, the doctor at the hospital found several bruises on the child's back and buttocks. Do you know how these were caused? No. How should I? Have you punished her for anything lately? No. Are you sure? Well, I did smack her on Tuesday. Well, she wouldn't stop crying, and I had to get some sleep, so I thought if she was going to cry, I'd, I'd give her something to cry for. Now, you look here. I'm not going to say another word till my husband comes home, see? When do you expect him? Maybe 11, maybe 12. He's gone to the dogs. Very well, then. We'll come back some evening when he's home. Stan had to work, and I had a terrible job getting out. I just given you up. This is Hank. Hiya. Hello. Say, baby, what about that drink, huh? Tomorrow, Hank. Tomorrow, nothing. What's wrong with now? Me and Bridget have got a day. See you tomorrow. Come on, babe. Ah, oh, gee. Where are we going? To the Hippodrome? Better than that, kid. We're going to meet my new boyfriend. Who's he? You'll see. about four, fair hair, blue eyes. That's him. And I suppose you're filling him up with buns and chocolates and lemonade and God knows what else, eh? I wouldn't be surprised. And I suppose it never occurs to you that mothers have got enough to do without keep coming down here fetching the kids back from the station. Oh, now, just it's a minute. It's a pity you've got nothing else to do apart from enticing kids here with your lemonade and your buns and your chocolates. Why don't you go out and catch a few crooks for a change? Yeah, but madam... Don't you madam me. Poor. I know what goes on here, you know. All the kids in our buildings go and get themselves lost so they can come and have a good tuck in at the government's expense. Oh, now, look. Now, it. you give him a flea in his ear next time and send him straight back home. Do you understand? I haven't got no time to keep coming down here just because you've got more food than you know what to do with. See? I'll send for the boy, madam. Hey, Bill. Yeah. Four more cokes. Right. <laughs> Will you look at that? Ten bob for a couple of orange cocktails. Say what? You can put it on your expenses. I have a good mind to complain to the manager. You can't do that. Not when you're on our pill. No, I suppose not. But I'll tell you one thing. Yon laddie will never be getting a tip from me. Keep the change, Bill. Thanks, Ray. Wanna dance? Oh, turn it up. Okay. And 
lovely. It tastes different from ordinary Coke. I should do. It's got a double rum in it. Shut up, stupid. Oh, I'd be tight. Go on, you can take it. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. Would you like a job here? Yeah? What sort? Hostess. Five smackers a week and perks. I can fix it for you if you like. I'd love to, Ray, honest, but I can't. Why not? I've got a kid to look after. You married? What's he do? Drives a lorry. How much does he make? Eight quid. You know, you look too young to be married. How old are you? Eighteen. Just the right age. Not for marriage. What's the time? What's the time, sucker? Oh, boss Lem? Oh, I've got to go. Get him off, Ed. No, I must, honest. You can go if you like. Chicken me and stay. Change your mind? No, I, I can't, Ray. Honest. Then I'll see you have. There's no need to. Come on, baby. I've got things to say to you. Good night. Thank you. Good night, Ray. Thanks an awful lot. But well, don't I get a kiss? You don't want to kiss me. That's what you think. I've got to go, Ray. See you tomorrow? No, I can't get out so soon again. I, I've got a kid to look after, you know. you find somebody else to look after. I'll meet you at the club, nine o'clock. No, I can't. I, I'm not supposed to be out tonight. I told them my mother was sick and I had to go and see her. I'll be expecting you. It's no good. I can't. You can, if you try. decided to come home. Is your mother better? Yes, much better, thanks. Is rum part of the treatment the doctor's giving her? I don't know what you mean. Don't you? Then let me explain. Your lipstick's smudged, your breath smells of rum, and your mother came to see you about half past nine. She left ten minutes ago. But she can't have. I've just come from You needn't here. trouble to lie to me. You haven't been to your mother's at all. You've been out with a man. I was told, Stan, that you're a slut, and now I can prove it. Not fit to black his boots. Did you lock that door? I did. And it'll stay locked till Stan gets back. But what about Jackie? I wondered when you'd remember him. He's upstairs. Fast asleep, poor little mite. I want to see him. You can't. You're not fit to touch a decent man's child. But who's going to look after him? I am. And that means that he'll be properly looked after for a change. You unlock that door or I'll break it down. Just you try. And I'll send for the police. And they'll be glad to see you again, I don't doubt. There's your bag ready packed. Now take it and get out! You think I wouldn't be glad to? I'm sick of your preaching and your nagging and the way you tried to turn Stan against me. I didn't want to marry him in the first place, and I wouldn't have if I hadn't had to. But he treated me right, and I've got nothing against him. You tell him if he wants me, he knows where to find me. But it's no use him asking me to come back here, because I'd rather die first! You tell him that! Bridget Foster, you have pleaded guilty to an extremely serious case of theft. Week after week, more and more cases of shoplifting are coming before me. And it's obvious that I shall have to pass severer sentences if they continue. Ordinarily, in your case, I should order a term of imprisonment. But in view of what the probation officer has told me, and the fact that this is your first offence, I shall impose a fine of five pounds. I must warn you, however, that if you are brought before me again for a similar offence, the penalty will be much more severe. Can I have time to pay, please? Hmm? Ask for time to pay, sir. 28 days to pay. See the court officer. Five pounds and a month to pay. Five nigger, wasn't it? But you can't pay. Somebody's got to, haven't they? Come on, Tosh, let's have a receipt. We haven't got all day.
You shouldn't have done that. I'd do a lot more than that for you, baby. I don't know how I'm ever going to pay you back. Meet me at the club, nine o'clock tonight, and I'll tell you. I don't know as I ought to. Ray, I've got something... Ray, I've got something to tell you. Save it till tonight, baby. I've got a blow. But, but I want to tell you... Tonight, baby, in the club, nine o'clock. Got it? Sure. All right, let's have it. What's the number? HYR 606, Austin Dark Blue. What time she due? Half two. Well, she might be a bit late, but not much. Uh, let me off around the corner, I've got to get back. I simply don't know how to begin. There's no need to be embarrassed with me, you know. Just tell me what happened. Well, it's a man. He's been following me. Oh, where was this? I first noticed him in Mark Street. He may have been following me before that, of course, but that was when I first noticed him. I turned into Church Street, and so did he. All the way down to the King's Road. There he was, just behind me. I crossed over to the other side of the road to get away from him, but he crossed over too. So what did you do? I jumped onto a bus, and just as it was starting, he got on too. Did he sit next to you? Oh, no. Just behind me. I see. And what did he do? Well, first he started breathing heavily, like this. <clears throat> Can you describe the man, do you think? I'm afraid not. I didn't dare look at him, you see, in case he flew at me. You know what men are. I do indeed. All right, Miss Hopkins, if you see the man again, take particular note of his appearance. And if he tries to attack you on a bus, you complain to the conductor. Very well. You think it will be quite safe for me to go home alone? Oh, yes. All right, if you say so. Uh, what's the trouble with her? A man's been following her. Oh, sounds like an acute case of wishful thinking. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, there's someone else waiting to see you in there. Oh, dear, not another. Afraid so. I've got Private Watkins outside, ma'am. Oh, yes. Bring her in. Private Watkins, you are charged with being absent since April the 27th. What have you got to say for yourself? Nothing, ma'am, except what's in the letter from the police. This says you dived into the Thames and rescued a little boy from drowning. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. That wasn't why you went on the run, was it? To rescue little boys from the river? No, ma'am. What was the reason? I wanted to get married, ma'am. Well, why didn't you ask for a compassionate discharge? I never thought of it, ma'am. Did you get married? Yes, ma'am. I see. Well, I'm afraid I shall have to remand you for a higher authority to deal with. 
Meanwhile, you'll be confined to barracks, of course. Jimmy, I can't see my husband. Not until this is cleared up, I'm afraid. All right, you may go. It's no good. We need at least three more men or we're stymied. Well, I don't think you'll find them. Leave it to me. I'll get them. I'll be right back. The Dramatic Society is putting on a pantomime for Christmas and we need three more men for the male chorus. Can I put you down for one? You cannot. Oh, go on. I said no. Got any reason? Aye, several. In the first place, I've got to study for my examination. And in the second, I don't sing and I can't dance. And in the third, I wouldn't if I could. On account of I don't crave for the company of women. That sounds very cosy and sociable. Well, if you're really interested in a purely personal opinion, I don't approve of women in the police force at all. Oh, you don't? No. I suppose you've got a very good reason for that, too. Certainly. In the first place, it's unfeminine. And in the second, it's uneconomic. And in the third, it's dangerous. Because it's a well-known fact that women are flighty, impetuous, undependable, antisocial, and easily led. May I ask you a very personal question? If you like. Did you, by any chance, have a mother? Eh? Directly I got out. I'm sure I did. Have you got your key? Yes. Thank you. Well, obviously somebody knew the number and had another one ready. Where do you garage your van? At Bray and Abbott's. I see. Does your firm garage all their vans there? Yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. Has this been out of your possession at all in the last two or three weeks? Never. I always keep it here. Never leaves me. Are you sure? Oh, yes. Except when I'm in bed, of course. I thought you might like to see this. Yeah. I found your van in Richmond. Abandoned. And it's safe. Empty. <laughs> You look like a corpse at christening. What's eating you? I'm sorry. It's me baby. I can't help worrying about him. Look, here's something to take your mind off your troubles. What is it? Open it, you'll see. For me? It'd look pretty silly on me, wouldn't it? Come here, I'll put it on for you. Okay, baby. Let's go.
wise to say anything unless you wish to do so, but whatever you say will be taken down in writing and may be given in evidence. Do you wish to say anything? Do I wish to say anything? I certainly do. You know me, don't you? You've seen me down here plenty of times before, haven't you? Yeah, plenty. I've never made any trouble before, have I? No, I don't think you have. All right, then. Well, next time you want to pinch me, you send one of the boys along, see? I don't mind being knocked off occasionally. That's your job and you've got to do it. But I'm sick and tired of being knocked off by coppers in skirts. It's bad for business. If I'm going to be pinched, I want to be pinched by a man, understand? Private Evans, ma'am. Come in, Private Evans. This is Mr. Potter of the Daily Echo. His paper published a piece about your rescuing that little boy from the river. Yes, ma'am, I saw it. Well, it seems that some of his readers were so taken by it that they've been sending him money for you. But perhaps you'd like to explain it to yourself, Mr. Potter. Thank you. Well, Mrs. Evans, our readers were obviously touched by your story, particularly by the bit about you and your husband being out of work and homeless. So much so that we've received no less than uh, 43 contributions amounting altogether to 182 pounds, 15 shillings. My directors have decided to make this up to 300 pounds. And I'm authorised to hand you the cheque today. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's right for me to take it, ma'am. Yes, of course. It should come in very useful when you're just starting married life. Yes, ma'am. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. Would it be all right for me to send 100 pounds to my husband? He's not well. He could do with it. Yes, I think so. The Sergeant Major will see to that for you, won't you, Sergeant Major? Yes, ma'am. All right. That's all. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, Tom? I want to report somebody missing. Oh, who? My missus. Oh, wait in there. I'll get someone to see you. Oh, thanks. Some people don't know when they're well off. Miss Ramsey. Yes? They're asking for you at the counter. No peace for the wicked. Uh-uh, <laughs> not there. Constable Ross is a woman hater. If he finds that another woman is joining the station, he's liable to throw a fit. I haven't he changed my opinion about women, Miss Lockett. But I happen to be going if you want this table. Thank you, kind sir. She hasn't been home for two days and nights. Had you had a quarrel, anything which might have made her decide to go? No. Well, that is... Better tell me. Well, my old lady had a bit of an up and a down with her about coming in late. That was Tuesday. Were you there? No, I was on the road, but I don't think it was that. If you ask me, she'd run away because she was frightened of going to court. Well, you know. But she was there. You sure? Yes, she was fined five pounds. Oh, well, that's it. She was frightened because she hadn't got it. She'd be scared of going to prison. But the fine was paid straight away. Well, it couldn't be. I mean, where'd she get the money? You mustn't mind my asking this, Mr Foster, but has your wife any men friends? Well, none that I know of. All right, we'll do what we can for you. You understand we've no power to make her come back to you. If she wants to stay away, that's between the two of you. There's nothing we can do about it. But you will try and find her? Yes, we'll circulate her name and description as a missing person. That's all we can do. Oh, oh. Thanks very much. Don't worry, she'll turn up. Layout you got here? Yes, my sister's. Keeping it warm for her while she's on her holidays. 
Well? No go. Bert's been pinched. When? Last night. I seen Flash Harry in the boozer. <laughs> have to be Muller, then. Oh, I don't fancy him. He's a bit dodgy. There's no one else. It's all right. I know what I'm doing. Where's the car? In Duke Street. Can I come, too? No, you can't. But I get lonely here all by myself. Then go out. Who's stopping you? How can I when I haven't even got enough for a cup of tea? Yeah. Buy yourself two cups. Man kann es fertig sein, bitte. Mm, mit Wuff. Ich hoffe bestimmt, dass Sie dann fertig sind. Das letzte Mal, als ich Ihnen diese Perlen brachte, hat es viel zu lange gedauert gehabt und Sie waren nicht an dem zugesagten Datum fertig. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Well, Dusty sent me. Who? You heard. Come inside. Let me see what you have. Ah. Mm. Mm. How, uh, how much you want? There's a thousand quid worth of stuff here. How much you want? Two and a half hundred. All right, what do you give? Fifty pound. Oh, come off it. Two hundred. Fifty pound. Okay, hundred and fifty. You waste my time. Oh, it's you. You stay here a minute, watch the show. For why? I got someone inside. No, do I smell that I mustn't meet your fine friends? Morning. I don't know you, do I? He's a friend of mine. We do business. I thought you don't do no more business like that. It is nothing, a few shillings only. I don't like him. I tell you, it's the last time. Yeah. We stay 60, yeah? 125. That's me last word. 70. 125. All right, 75 then. A few shillings only, he says. 120. Let me see again. You took long enough? Well, you know what he is. How much? Eighty-five quid. Best I could do, Ray. I figured it was better than nothing. Eighty-five. Oh, no, it's robbery. But he's our last chance. I'll make him pay for that. Who's the old dame? His missus. Do they live over the shop? I don't know, I guess so. Okay, Mr. Muller, we'll be back. Your husband in, Mrs. Dawson? Yeah, you better come in. All right, Annie. There's no need for Mrs. Dawson to go. This is no business of hers. I should have thought it was as much her business as yours. No, no, it isn't. It's not her kid. You mean it's adopted? No, it's mine. But not hers. I was married before. I see. I can't expect her to have the same feelings about somebody else's kid, can you? So if anyone's going to cop it for this lark, it better be me. Was it you who hit the child? Never mind who hit her. I'm responsible. Did you know she was being left alone all day? Well, of course I knew. Do you think that's the right way to treat a child? No. You realize Mrs. Dawson has laid herself open to a serious charge? Yes, sir. What happened to the baby's mother? We was divorced. What was the last address you had for her? Didn't have no address. The last I know, she was a waitress at the Grosvenor House. Good 
afternoon. I'm making some inquiries about a Mrs. Lily Dawson. Does she work here? No. Got no Dawson's heir. Has anyone of that name worked here in the last 12 months? You better speak to my missus. Maybe she can tell you. You can talk here if you like. Thank you. Hello? Mm -hmm. Somebody here to see you. Oh, what was it you wanted? Well, I'm looking for a Mrs. Lily Dawson. Your husband said he thought you might know where she's working now. She did work here for a while, didn't she? Yes. How long ago was it? Oh, about... about nine months. What do you want her for? Well, it's about her little girl. Has anything happened to Vivi? Oh. Yes. I used to be Lily Dawson. I married Prope at six months ago. What's happened to her? Well, sit down. I'll tell you about it. The mother's married again. She's a Mrs. Propert now. The husband's a grocer in a fair way of business. Do you think she'll take the child if we can arrange it? I doubt it. She's very fond of it and all that, but she doesn't want the new husband reminded of the old husband, all that sort of thing. Well, you can't exactly blame her, can you? Mm. I suppose not. Still, I hate to think of that child going into a home. She'll be better off there than where she is now. I suppose so. They do their best. And it's not the same as being with her own mother. Oh, I know, if she were my child. But she's not, is she? <laughs> no, unfortunately. I only wish she were. You know, I have half a mind to leave the force and adopt her myself. She's so sweet. She needs a little love and affection. I can't see what good I'm doing here. You know, you don't mean a word of that. Sergeant Ramsey. What name? Huron? No, I don't know him. Put him on and I'll see what I can do. Hello, Mr. Huron. What can I do for you? This girl what calls herself Edna Evans. I've just seen her picture in the paper. Well, I want her address, see? Well, of course I've got a right to it. I'm her old man, aren't I? You mean you're married to her? Just a moment, I'll have to look it up. Get on to communications room. I want this call traced. Now then, you say your name's Huron? Yeah, that's right. And she's Edna Huron. Well, of course I can. I've got my lines to prove it. Ah, now, listen, lady, I can't come down to Nick. I'm busy. All I want is her address, see? I'll tell you for why. Because I want my share of the 300 knickers she's getting. Well, of course I've got a right to it. I'm her husband, aren't I? For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. You come round to the station when you finish work and we'll talk about it. Ask for Sergeant Ramsey. No, I can't give you any more information over the telephone. All right, I admit it. I was married to him. But I haven't seen him for years. I, I, th I thought he was killed in the Blitz. I hope so, anyway. He says you were living with him up to two years ago. Then he's a ruddy liar. Do you want me to bring him up here so that you can tell him that to his face? No, thanks. That's what I thought. Now, when did you leave him? Oh, I was always leaving him. Maybe two or three months. And this second marriage, when was that? July. Where? Paddington Registry Office. Does Evans know you were married before? No. You're going to tell him? Well, wouldn't you rather tell him yourself? I suppose so. It's a pity you didn't before. I know it. After seven years of purgatory with Ernie, being with David was like being in heaven. Then he got ill. When he asked me to marry him, I didn't dare tell him about Ernie in case I lost him. I see. Well, you realize what this means. How long will I get? Oh, I can't tell you that. But we'll do the best we can for you. Having seen both men, I know which I'd prefer. But bigamy is bigamy, and, well, it's out of our hands. But I've never done anything like that before. I keep telling you, you don't have to do anything. Just keep your trap shut and look like you was a dick. Well, how do I know how a dick looks? Look like you always look. Well, how's that? Dumb. 
There, now, look here. All right, all right. Are you going to do it or aren't you? Well, why can't Chick do it? Then I could drive the car. I'm a smashing driver. I keep telling you he knows Chick. What about then? Did you ever see a copper who was knee-high to a grasshopper? Well, I'd rather drive. Well, you can't drive. Come on, yes or no? All right. How much do I get? Ten percent. Ten percent of what? Whatever we get. Five hundred, if we're lucky. All right. OK. Put that on. Let's get going. Remember, keep your track shut and do exactly as I tell you, right? Well, Mr. Muller? Yeah? We're police officers. We have reason to believe you've stolen jewelry on the premises. Stolen jewelry? Here? No, nothing here. Lock the shop door, Sergeant. Why you lock my door? You don't want people coming in while we're searching the shop, do you? Who says you search my shop? Look, Mr. Muller, we're the police. Would you rather we took you down to the station first? Oh, no, no. Then keep your trap shut. But I, I tell you, it is all honest stuff. There is nothing stolen here. You got invoices for all this junk? Yeah, yeah, I show you plenty of invoices. Never mind, later. What's in here? My watch up. Show me. Where's the key of that thing? Remember, I come on, come on, open her up. This looks like the missing staff, doesn't it, Sergeant? Hmm? Or says this looks like the missing staff? Oh, I right. very like it, yes. Got invoices for this? Yes. No, I, I'm not sure. You're sure, all right. You've got no invoices for this because it's stolen jewellery. What else you got in here? Got a licence to keep a gun? No. Got any ammunition for it? Yeah. Show me. This and this. Get your hat. What for you want me to get my hat? Because we're going to the station, that's why. Right. You'll get six years when they see this lot. Six years? Oh, no, no. Six years if I put in a good word for you, otherwise it'll be ten. You, you put in a good word for me, yeah? Good words cost money. Yeah. You take this and let me go, yeah? You're trying to bribe me. You can get another ten years for that, you know? All right, Sergeant, wait in the shop. Yes, sir. Look after that. You want to talk business? Yeah, yeah. You take the jewelry and this, and we say no more about it, yeah? Are you crazy? N not enough? Not nearly enough, Mr. Muller. You want this ash tub, it'll cost you 500 pounds. 500? You get the money, and once is mine, and we'll tell you where to bring it. And make sure it's all there, otherwise the next day you go to jail, understand? Yeah, I have it ready, I, I promise. And remember, you tell nobody about this, nobody, not even your wife. If they find out, you get another ten years for bribery as well. I don't tell no one, I promise. Okay. Right, Sergeant, you can open up. Yes, sir. Now, no trick's mine. We'll be watching.
you do not pay the money. Yeah. I pay. Oh, look. Better we go to Mr. Schulz. I say no. And I say yes, Mr. Schulz will know what we should do. I tell you the policeman, he say, you tell no one. If you tell, it is bribery too, another ten years. And I still say we tell him. I promise to tell no one. He's our lawyer, that's not the same thing like as, 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 as someone. No, Anna. Yes, and if you do not go, I go. So, it is better we go together. Hmm. I can only tell you, you should go to the police. Well, that's what I tell him. I cannot do it. If I go, they send me to jail for ten years more. The police, he says so. But it's just nonsense. But he says so. He is frightened because it happened to him before. When was that? In Berlin. One day, the Gestapo, they come, they say, pay this, I pay. Presently, they come again and say, pay this much, I pay. Six times, they come, six times, I pay. The seventh time they come, I, I can't pay, so they send me to a prison camp. And that is how it will be here. If I pay, they say nothing. If I don't pay, they send me to prison. Mr. Miller, in England it is not like that. That's what I tell him, but to me he doesn't listen. Everywhere it is like that. No, not in England. Go to the police, Mr. Miller. It's the only way. I will think it over. Tonight I will think it over. Tomorrow I decide. Goodbye, Mr. Schultz. Thank you very much. Not at all. Not in the woman. I followed her there. What about him? Well, he's back at the shop as well as I know. You sure he didn't go with her? No. Okay, I'll handle it. Where's the chick? Dancing. Hey, where are you going? Gonna see a man about a dog. Back in a minute. Tonight, we're going into the Downbeat Club. Directly the premises have been entered, the bar will be sealed off by Sergeant Ricks. I want everyone to remember that all drinks found on the table are to be retained for analysis. There's no doubt this club is being frequented by habitual criminals. We've reason to believe that girls who have absconded from approved schools are using it. Now, you all know the route you're to follow, so be as inconspicuous as you can, and be there in time for the rendezvous at 11.40 sharp. That's all. You must make him come to the station. That's all I ask. It's all what Mr. Schulz asks. He, he hasn't got 500 pounds, and if he has got them, he gives them to me, not to the police, you understand? It's crazy. No, you're telling me. He, I, I keep asking him. Yeah, no, no, I, no, just I a minute, madam, please. I think you better talk to the women, please. The women, please. What? All of them? Oh. Yeah, well, is Miss Lando in? Oh, well, let me speak to her. Who is there? 
Please, open up. Come in, Mrs. Muller. Sit down, will you? Thank you. Miss Landos told me all about your husband. Now, you didn't see these two men yourself? No. no. And there was nobody else present when they came to see him? No, nobody else. Then I'm afraid there's nothing more we can do until Mr. Muller's here. I want he should be here. All the time I say to him he should come. But he says no. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll send you home in a police car to fetch him. And one of our nicest sergeants will go along to help you persuade him, eh? How's that? I'll try. Good. Just a minute. What's the trouble? Jewel has been attacked, sir. Badly hurt? He's unconscious. He's sent the ambulance. Your husband's been worrying about you. Bless him. He wants you back again. Well, I'm better off as I am, thank you very much. How about your baby? Don't you want to see him? No. Oh, come now. I never wanted the baby in the first place. Besides, it's better off without me. If it's grandmother's so fond of it, let her look after it. That's not what you really think, is it? Yes, it is. I want a bit of fun out of life while I'm still young enough to enjoy it. That's a pretty brooch you've got there. Where did you get it? If you must know, my gentleman friend gave it to me. Where did he get it? I wouldn't demean myself by asking him such a question. Where did you really get it, Bridget? I, I told you. My boyfriend gave it to me. What's his name? That's my business. Where does he live? Find out. Very well, if you're in no hurry, I'm not. Hmm? Can you spare a moment, sir? You seem to be having a busy night. What is it this time? Sergeant Ramsey here has got a girl they picked up on the Down Beach raid. What about her? She's wearing a brooch which tallies with the list on that jeweler's van job. Are you sure about that? Positive, sir. Do we know the girl? She's one conviction for shoplifting. Mm -hmm. And her husband came in the other day to report her missing. Left home, apparently. She claims that the brooch was given her by her new boyfriend, but she won't say who he is. You'd better get a statement from her. I wondered if we could put a tail on her. You think she might lead us to the van boys? She might. Hmm. It's a long shot. 
Still, we've got precious little else to go on. All right, go ahead. Why didn't you get her out, too? I couldn't have done it, Ray. They'd only have nabbed us both. All right, all right. You better blow. I did my best, Ray. On my life, I did. I couldn't have done no more. I'm not talking to you. I'm going up to take a look. You wait here. You've got a nerve walking out on me like that. I suppose you knew the cops were coming. Of course I didn't. I was there when I got back. Then why didn't you do something? There's no sense in both of us getting hooked, was there? What happened to the neck? Oh, they asked me a lot of questions about the brooch. That's all. You didn't tell them anything? Do I look soft? Yeah? There's a couple of busies outside of your place. Man and a woman. Well, I don't know. Must have told Bridget, I suppose. Well, I thought you'd like to know. OK, Chick, thanks. No, I'll see you tomorrow at Len's place. The lift stopped on the top floor. That means flat 71 at 2. Better ring in for instructions. There's a phone box over there. Come on, baby, we're getting out. But what for? Come on, come on. But Ray! Fractured skull. They'll have to operate. You know what that'll mean? By tomorrow, it may be a murderer we're looking for. That was my fault. I let him slip through my fingers. Oh, you couldn't have done more than you did. Now, let's see where we are. The man we're looking for pulled the jeweler's van job. There's no doubt about that. He coshed Muller, and he's been living with the girl. She's really all we've got to go on. There's the car. We've got the number. Oh, you got rid of that by now. Probably stolen anyway. D.I. What? Where? All right, thank you. What did I tell you? The car's been found abandoned in Eaton Square. You better get cracking on an all stations message with this girl's description. Yes, sir. Right away. Mm. All right. Be an angel and answer that for me, will you? Hello. Who? Right, I'll tell her. There's a Mr. and Mrs. Propert to see you in the waiting room. Oh, dear, I suppose you couldn't finish this for me, could you? Sorry, no time. Having my hair done at 12, and I've got to buy a dress before then. Yeah, all right. Have a good time. All right, I'll see you to it. Good morning. Good morning. about my wife's baby. 
Well, if you want to know how she is, perhaps you'd like to ring the hospital. I'll give you the number. Uh, that's not what we were c came about, exactly. Uh... Mrs. Propert feels that Vivian isn't being taken care of properly where she is at the moment. No more do I. Yes, I think we agree with you. As a matter of fact, Mr. and Mrs. Dawson will come before the court next week. That's as it should be. But what's going to happen to the child? Well, when she leaves the hospital, she'll come before the juvenile court, as in need of care or protection. Mm, uh, we was wondering whether we couldn't uh, adopt her. But when I spoke to you about it, you wouldn't hear of it. What's made you change your mind? Well, as a matter of fact, I have. After all, it's my wife's kid. If it makes her happy, well, it's good enough for me. Well, I'm very glad to hear you say so. Now, if you'd like to come to the court, I think we can arrange for you to speak to the probation officer. All right. When is it? I'll get you the details. This place. I can't find a thing. I'm afraid there isn't any. I always go out for meals. Oh, that won't suit Ray. He likes a good breakfast, don't you, darling? That's right. Well, give us a couple of pounds and I'll stock up. A couple of quid? What are we having? Caviar? <laughs> Shan't be long. You better go and find Chick. Tell him we need a car here at 11 o'clock. You got any preference? We need a big one. We've got a long way to go. Oh. Wasting your time, miss. It's out of order. Excuse me. We don't open till 11.30, dearie. May I use your phone? It's very urgent. All right, come on. Thank you. Like it? Not bad. Where'd you find her? In Knightsbridge. Dame in a mink coat parked it outside a dress shop. I figured she'd try on every dress in the shop. She won't miss it for a couple of hours. She'll be halfway to Liverpool by then. Anyway, she'd have been done for parking. Oi, oi. I've clicked. Fancy yourself, don't you? I've clicked, I tell you. See that dame down there? She's waiting for me, see? Here, come and have a butcher's. 
Where? Down there. If I've seen her when I come in, I'll give her the old... Well, what do you know? I've seen her before somewhere, I think. I know. She's a cop. What, her? Nah, she's too cute for a copper. Show me where. She was one of the ones that came to the club. I'm sure of it. What are we going to do? Get out, quick. Ah, there's no back way. Take the car. She can't stop us. But what about me? Go on. Beat it, Casanova. But I must go with you. You stay where you are. Ray, I, I must go, please. Ray! I Ray. said you stay where you are. Oh, Ray! 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 Come on, sucker. Ray! Get in there. Oh, come on, take me along with you. Sorry, my wife wouldn't like oh, it. Oh, go on, you're not married? Oh, you cut it out. Break it up, Dutch. I'm in a hurry. Just a minute. I'm a police officer. Where's your driving license? Come out of it. Oh, 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 yourself. But if you take my advice, the first thing you'll do is to give us the exact story of everything you've been up to. I, I don't want to go to prison. I couldn't bear it if they sent me to prison. I'll, look, I'll do the best I can for you. And I want you to promise me one thing. What's that? That when all this is over and done with, you'll go back to your husband. Uh, he, you. I know he wouldn't have me. Ah, now you don't know anything of the sort. Marcin of is a very decent fellow. And if he'll have you back, you should thank God for him and settle down like a good wife and look after him and the family. I will. I'll do anything you say. Anything, anything you say. Really, I will. Well, you better come and wash your face first. And then we'll make a start. Take into account the evidence which we have heard today. 
evidence which shows her to have led a completely blameless life and to bear an exemplary character. Thank you, Mr. Fenton. Edna Huron, you have pleaded guilty to committing bigamy. Before I pass sentence, is there anything you wish to say? Yes, my lord. Next time I see a kid in the river, he can bloody well drown. I don't mean that, I'm sure. If I thought you did, I might be inclined to change my mind about the, the course I had proposed taking. But because I am sure you do not, and because of your bravery and past record, I propose to pass the lightest sentence which the law allows. I shall order you to serve two days' imprisonment, which means that you will be free when the court rises. Turning King's Road, Sergeant. 